Welcome to All My God Ministries. I am your host, Reverend Anita Morris. And this week we will talk about God's answers to prayers in a Thanksgiving psalm found in Psalm 2020. And that is Psalm 20, the Thanksgiving for God who prompts us to give him thanks of answer to prayers. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your gracious gift of your Holy Spirit who dwells in a believer, in all believers. We thank you, Lord God, for never leaving us lonely, for being our compassionate father, our mother, our sister, our friend. Thank you, Lord, for being so kind, so, so merciful towards us. And I just thank you, Lord God, for your love and for your tender mercies. As Psalm 103 reads, O oh, bless the Lord, O oh, my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. O oh, bless the Lord, O oh, my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who satisfies your mouth with good things. That means what comes out of your mouth will be good things of thanksgiving, and not with a bitter soul or bitter taste of bitterness and sowing strife and confusion. But it will be a glory to God. It will be of gratitude because God who fills all those lonely places has answered your prayers. We thank you, O oh gracious God, for answering the prayers of the many, those who are saved, those who are unsaved, those who have come to a knowledge of the Lord and who have received pardon for their sins and those who don't know you in the darkness of their lives that they come to know you and receive you as their Lord and Savior. We thank you, Lord God, for this is February Love Month, not only February Love Month, but it also it's United States of America as we celebrate Black History Month. So we thank you, Lord God, for our pioneers who went before us, who paved the way for us. And thank you, Lord God, that you have allowed us to see a new day, a new mercy, and being so kind to us. And thank you, Lord God, for remembering us and our prayers. In all these things, we give you thanks. Amen and amen. Excuse me. In Psalm 20, a prayer for victory in battle. Such a prayer can help us prepare for any great challenge. David knew King David of the Old Testament, who is in the lineage of Jesus Christ. He knew that trust should be placed in the Lord of hosts, the Lord of heaven's armies, and the Lord more than in human power. So he never even allowed himself to the steadiness to rest in human power, but allowed him to rest his faith, his hope, and God's power. That's a mighty, mighty witness of the fortitude of someone's faith that is recognized and resound. And when it's resounding like that, others can just stay in awe and witness, that was a great man, that was a great woman, because their faith did not rest in human power, but rested in God, and God delivered and rescued him or her from many battles. And that is credit to God, my beloved. God is good and greatly to be praised. In Psalm 20, it reads, In times of trouble, may the Lord answer you, your cry. There was many times, I'm sure, that you have laid silent and in quietness, silent in tears. You know, you might have to have had grieve, long hours, people that don't even know about it. But God has started to answer your prayers slowly but surely. He said he's an on-time God as one of the gospel authors of Shirley Caesar had um, sung a song said he's an on-time God. Yes he is. He may not come when you want him or is it might be Dottie Peebles but he's right on time. He's an on-time God. Okay so as we recognize that even in our persistence that our answer to prayer may not be right away. It might take great faith of your practicing patience, 
of character, of hope, of, of challenge, of, of resistance, of perseverance, of steadiness, of steadfastness, of being firm, of your hope and what you believe and not being deterred by what others would like for you to do. But you know what God has told you to do, but you have remained faithful and God has answered and honored your prayers. And it goes on. May the name of the God of Jacob keep you safe from all harm. Now, as you know, the God of Jacob, as we say in the forefathers of the old biblical testament of the Torah, the fathers of Abraham, of Jacob, of Isaac, of Jacob, okay? So those were the forefathers of the Old Testament. And you know when Jacob had stole his blessing from Esau, who was the eldest, and his mom actually conspired with Jacob to do so. So Jacob had to run for his life from his own, own brother because of that stolen blessing. And there was many, many years of animosity jealousy that wrecked havoc in Jacob's life that he was afraid of meeting ever laying eyes on his eldest brother Esau because he thought that Esau would kill him because he stole the inheritance the proclamation of the blessing from father to son even though Esau traded it for a soup which he was very hungry so it's also a responsibility level as well on Esau's part. But nevertheless, it said, may the God of Jacob, not Esau, but the God of Jacob, keep you safe from all harm. And as we recognize, beloved, that Jacob was kept from harm all those years of patience, of trials, of servitude, when he had to serve his life or I would say serve, yeah, his life to wed Rachel, but he was given Leah, but he had to serve additional seven years for Rachel. That's the entire, the, the total years were 14 years in all before he was released to be wed to Rachel of his choice. And, and God had answered his prayers. So we can see that there will be times of affliction, there will be times of trials, but we want God to answer you and recover you from all those trials of challenges that may be too hard for you to fathom, too hard for you to recover in your own strength, but you have to, beloved, look in the strength of the Lord. For in Zechariah 4, 6, it reads, for it's not by might nor by power, human power okay but it is by God's spirit says the Lord so God will move upon whom he will move and he will show glory upon whom he shall glory and that his power will be resound in his creation and in the earth and verse 2 it reads may he send you help from his sanctuary and strengthen you from Jerusalem. So not only is the word of God asking and soliciting for God's help, which is the root word of help is Yashar, and Yashar is upright, righteous, but Yeshua means help, rescue, deliverance. That is Jesus' name, to send you help. In the beginning was God, the word in the beginning was God and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory. So as God was in the beginning, he also was wisdom in Christ Jesus, not yet made known to the earth. Okay, so but to God be the glory. It said, may he send you help from his... In verse 3 it reads, may he read your gifts and look favorably on your burnt offerings. Have you had encountered a time where you utilize all your gifts, all your talents, or work for nonprofits? I'm raising my hand. You have been overlooked or disregarded as not of importance. 
or low degree, you don't seek financial gain of human wealth, but you know your help and your, your favor comes from the Lord. And this is what the psalm is asking. As you have done that, that God will see that and honor all those talents and gifts and sacrifices which you have dispensed into the earth, that you have dispensed to other humankind, that you have dispensed to your fellow neighbor, to your sisters and brothers, that he'll look favorable upon your talents, your gifts, and shine his glory upon you, that he'll act upon your behalf and show you a good harvest. That's what I'm asking God for you today, that you will receive your harvest as he has also been revealing and showing the impact of what he has endowed with in my life and showing me the harvest of the lives of others that God has allowed me to plant the seeds there and it has grown and it's prospering and that's all to give God the glory not of my glory but unto God be all the glory and it's so powerful it's so uh, what do you call it breathtaking to see God's word take place in other human lives other than your own. In verse 4 it reads, May he grant your heart's desires and make all, not some, but all your plans succeed. How many people are planners out there? Or that you know exactly what you're doing from three months from now, six months from now, how much money you're spending, or what do you need to get out of the hole? What do you need to stay abreast? How many people are always fixated on planning and planning their different seasons, whether it's summer, winter, spring, or fall? But you always have a plan in mind where you want to be, what goal set, what age you are at in your age group, where you should be in life, your career, all these different sectors of goal sets or planning. And it reads that may he grant your heart's desires and make all your plans succeed. This was a prayer I prayed years ago that once I saw this, I would always proclaim it. May God grant my heart's desires, make all my plans succeed. And beloved, it has been a trustworthy saying, meaning amen, that God has shown up. He also makes all my plans succeed. It may not be in my timing, but it's in God's timing that he fulfills all of my desires and the now and also things that I can't even see that is an expression of his love towards me that I'm grateful for and it's felt by those that have loved me and those who have entered and, and came into my life to impart blessings wisdom and allowed me to continue to aspire and grow with them and to mature into a, a beautiful being that I am today and I give God all the glory and praise and verse 5 it reads a verse of Psalm 20 and verse 5 may we shout for joy when we hear of your victory so the congregation your peers are looking and may they shout for joy when they hear of your victory recently I had um what do you call it, published um, public news regarding my situation and to come as um, being allowed to be a mother and to God be the glory that the, um, the test which I had to take was successful and God has given me victory and all my peers, my chaplains, my, my um, peer groups of my uh, training have always said Anita may you have a harvest I see your harvest coming God is God is shining upon you congratulations all these about a whole bunch of almost more over near a hundred have have been elated and shouted the victory chant of God's success over my life not because of me I'm 41 years old so that continues to be an um what do you call it? 41 when you're preparing to be a mother that puts you at a different bracket in your life and stages. But God be the glory. He has answered the prayers and he has kept me safe, healthy, and strong. 
and I'm sure the child within will be healthy, safe, and strong. And it says, may we shout for joy when we hear of your victory and raise a victory banner in the name of our God. And may the Lord answer all your prayers. And he has done that. And I thank God for him answering all my prayers. Even the things that I did not pray, like I mentioned to you, those things that you have prayed and things that you didn't pray, but God has answered your prayers. It says before we even ask, God said, I have already answered you. He already knew what you were pondering before you even uttered it on your lips. He, he is that good. For God is good and he's greatly to be praised. And so he wants to make himself known to you, not among you only, but to you intimately. As he is known, he wants to be known to you. In verse 6, of Psalm 20. Now I know that the Lord rescues his anointed king. He will answer him from his holy heaven and rescue him by his great power. Even when David had to meet the challenge of his predecessor, which is king, his, um, his predecessor, or he was the predecessor, however you say that. Saul and King David, right? He was fleeing from King Saul. And even though David, King David had an opportunity to kill Saul, he said to himself that even God will not allow that for me to slay my brother. It says, touch not his God's anointed and do his prophet no harm. So even in that stature of great power, of great influence, we are responsible, beloved, to not take life in our own hands, to wield power over those whom we can easily overcome and allow ourselves to be God in their lives and to take a life that it does not belong to us, beloved. That belongs to God and the risk belongs to God. The consequences is God. So I just thank God he didn't rest any of that situation on you when you have been um, what do you call it? Run havoc with or have been, um, you know, a lot great atrocities as we recall Black History Month or any kind of month where you see African Americans who have been um, brutally beaten or lynched back in back in years ago, 150 years, maybe even 75 years, maybe even 60 years. Maybe they're still lynching people that we don't even know about, but. To God be the glory. It's not for us, beloved, to take life in our own hands. Okay? Even in verse 6, it reads, um, in verse 7, Some nations boast of their chariots and horses, of human power, of exploits, of what they did, and how much harm they have caused to humanity. And that is a grave danger. It says, But we will boast in the name of the Lord our God. Because God gives us great rescue, even from the wills of the power of those who want to commit atrocities upon a people group. God gives great deliverance. He gives great power. And he, like I said, he lifts up one and he sets down the other. So just know that. In verse 8, it says, those nations will fall down and collapse, but we will rise up and stand firm. Even when I mentioned earlier that when your faith is strong, just continue to stay strong in the power of God's might. For it's not by might nor by power, but it's by God's spirit, his might, that overshadows and it causes you to stand firm, causes you to stand, stand hopeful, and causes you to not be deterred by your peers when they're going a different way but God says this is the way and I want you to walk therein I want you to stay put I want you to still honor me I want you to still obey me I want you to still believe what I'm going to do in your life and I, I am going to make your plan succeed will you be still and stand fast and see the salvation of the Lord upon your life in this season God is asking but your faith must stand firm. Okay? 
and then in verse 9 at closing it says give victory to our king O Lord answer our cry for help so even in challenging times even at times where we have also see on TV if those are people who are knowledgeable or stay in current events that people might see that we might embark on another government shutdown for those who work for the federal government and some entities where um, being threatened by another government shutdown through via the wall um, of President Trump's administration but to God be the glory that he answers our prayers when we call that we stand in the gap for others when they have areas of lack but it says no good thing will he withhold from you who walk upright so I just thank God that he'll answer all of your prayers and that his plans your plans that you have planned will succeed in the things that pertain to life and godliness and that you will honor your your lifestyle to God and that you will know how to walk in love and repentance and wholeness and healing for yourself and that you'll go from glory to glory strength to strength in this season and forever giving God the glory may he uphold you and and may you have good comfortable thoughts awareness and and thank you for looking out for your fellow man fellow humankind it could be your neighbor it could be your relative and whoever God has called you to um, to be a steward over or to show um, compassion to that you'll be faithful in your assignment and that you do not grow weary and well-doing for you shall reap if you faint not so let, you let God continue to arise in you. May his power continue to arise in you. And may his spirit overtake you where you have goodness overflowing, joy overflowing, pressed down, shaken together, running over. So may you have all the attributes that you need to continue to live a sustainable life, a thriving life that is exhibiting God's goodness and his grace. And may you offer that to others as you overcome and as God answers your prayers thank you for standing in the gap for others and see and enchant the victory for others when they have received the victory and join in and and shout the victory with them join in it says rejoice with those who rejoice okay amen and we want to do that we want to count it done and and give God all the glory for his many, many, many awe-inspiring deeds. When you look outside and see that you are still living, that you have met the challenges that we have just overcome, the different s snowstorms, and there are people who have um, have been um, killed by sub-degree weather, freezing below negative 49 degrees, some were said in Minnesota or somewhere in different Midwest areas or out West areas who did not survive, but you did. And you got to give God the glory, beloved, for your life and to, to say, hey, I am here and in you, God, I live, I move and I have my being. And when I look and I hear of my dad and I hear him progressing, he's still here fighting pancreatic cancer, fourth stage pancreatic cancer, and he is still able to talk, to communicate, to, to shine forth God's victorious light upon him, and God has given him victory as long as breath shall be in him. God is being glorified, and I just thank God for bringing him into a peace, a place of rescue, that even God will answer his prayers in these time of difficulties, but that he'll be strengthened with his whole humanity and in the God's might. And thank you, Lord God, for binding up my dad's wounds. And with your stripes, he's been healed. I pray for all of you. I don't know where your sense of struggle, I don't know what transitions of life, I don't know what ailments or disease you may have, but I pray that God send his word to heal you and deliver you from all destruction. And with your stripes, he, with his stripes, you have been healed. Meaning some people receive that healing in this now and some people re re receive that healing um once they 
go and be with the Lord, they receive new bodies. For this is a perishable body. We decay, this body decays day by day. But we are renewed in the spirit of our mind. So know that wisdom of God. For the wisdom of God is, is sometimes counted foolishness with men. But continue to be steadfast in God's presence. And to continue to fill yourself with the joy of the Lord. Which is your strength that gets you from day to day. As each day's need. God bless you. God be with you. God make his face to shine upon you. Be gracious unto you. And give you peace. In Jesus name. God bless you. And have an outstanding month of February. God bless you.